LGBT community. And my next guest has been working to encourage more people from the LGBT community to get into engineering. Dr. Mark McBride Wright, chair and co-host, co-founder, I'm sorry, of Inter Engineering is launching an event encouraging more people to share their experiences in the field. And I'm pleased to say Dr. Mark McBride Wright joins me in the studio. Now, I think I said your name many times. I just love saying it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, really, name. it's a really long name. My husband and I just say it's a double vowel. It's just a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. it I, I like it. I like it a lot. Now, let's just get, get straight to it. So, the event, tell us a little bit more about it because you have about 20 videos, don't you, that yes. you'll be showing? So, two years ago, if you Google being a gay engineer, being a lesbian engineer, transgender engineer, nothing came up. So, what we did was set up, a, um, set up an organisation, Inter Engineering to connect, inform and empower LGBT engineers um, and supporters. This event specifically um, is to uh, put more content out there on positive role models for LGBT engineers. Um, so we've had 20 videos recorded. Um, we're launching them on the 2nd of February next year at the Royal Academy of Engineering. And we've got a big diversity from transgender to lesbian to gay engineers, all just talking about how great our profession is and how you can actually be gay and an engineer. There are two things that don't quite go together sometimes in people's minds. Um, a lot of people think that gay men, for example, have to go and work in fashion or, you know, other stereotypical industries. And we're trying to break that barrier. Really. And I mean, it's interesting because you've got about 20 videos. So these are obviously people's stories that you're yes. going to be sharing. Tell us about some of the stories and that you've come across in the film. Um, I, we have people that come out at different ages in life because, as you've just seen in Pride in London, LGBT rights has been an evolving movement, and it still is. Um, so we have people who are in their 50s that have come out, people that have kids, people that have decided to transition later on in life because their gender identity, um, they haven't had the chance to sort of um, accept it. Um, and then right the way back to the other end where we have um, students that are LGBT. Um, up to 62% of students who are out at university go back into the closet when they start work in the workplace. That's very interesting. So, so we want to work with our uh, network companies, companies and institutes that we work with to try and encourage that inclusive workplace culture so that we can avoid that because it's just a complete loss of talent um, and it impacts productivity of our engineering workforce. And this government is all about improving productivity and improving retention, getting more out of people. And if you're not able to be yourself in the workplace, well, then your mind is preoccupied and you're not being the best of what you can do in the job that you have to deliver on. Not to mention we spend most of our time, you know, at work. We so do. We want, you, we want you to should have be, a great yeah. place to work. Absolutely. Want to have fun. Absolutely. Now, tell us more about your experiences and grow, you know, going through the industry, your journey as an LGBT engineer. So I've never had any explicit homophobia directed at me. I have, um, however, I have been in meetings where you know people, through un through lack of education, will maybe say that's gay. You know, that's gay is a common phrase in our playground nowadays, used as a derogatory term to mean something bad. And to me, that resonates back to when I was bullied as a child. And you know, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And so, I, I not I call people up on it, not in a not in a bad way, but I just educate them on what it means to me and how it makes me feel in the workplace. And I, and I really shouldn't have to feel like that. Um, and so there's other people that, that, that can feel the same. But look, I'm wanting to shift the needle from it being a negative thing to be more positive. Let's talk about the benefits of like celebrating difference, not just from LGBT, but on ethnicity, on social background, on social class, on everything, so that we can move away from white middle class male that is the perception of engineering when it is changing. Bringing diversity onto the table, you know, which exactly. is something that, of course, you have touched on. Now, you mentioned the government earlier on, and you've been working very closely, haven't you, with the government to, you know, make some improvements yes. in this industry. What are some of the changes that you guys are planning to bring in or you've observed? So, because of all the coverage that we've had in the written press, um, in the government got in touch last year and I wrote a report called Engineering Action, Tackling Homophobia in Engineering. And we looked at the impact it's having on productivity in the sector. Um, we pulled together a lot of recommendations on creating an inclusive working environment. And we're specifically working with the government to try and um, encourage companies to take, um, to take measure of some of these recommendations that we've put forward. 
One of the aspects in particular is the public sector quality duty that public contracts have to abide by under the Equality Act. The government tries to cascade change through the supply chain through asking its contractors to meet, meet its equality requirements. Um, that's maybe not been done in equal measure as it should be. So we're, we're working with the government on trying to improve that. And we're also working with the Engineering Council on a very exciting project um, where we're hoping to work towards uh, 2018 with the launch of Crossrail to coincide calling it the Year of the Engineer. Um, so I, I'm, I'm working behind the scenes just now with the government, Crossrail and some engineering institutes to achieve that. I so like that. Watch this space. We will be. It's also when Crossrail comes, it'll be the year that South East London finally gets into central London quickly. Exactly. <laughs> We're looking forward to that. Dr. Mark McBride, right? Thank you very much indeed for coming in to speak Thanks to us on London Live this Thanks. afternoon. Thank you.